I'm here with Om Puri and Aki Khan, who are the stars in West is West. And my name is Rimki, um, reporting from the Muslim paper. Thank you for doing this interview with us. Thanks for having us. Um, well, I'm going to start with Om Puri first. Um, did you find it difficult getting back in touch with the character of George Khan? Not really. It was a well-written script, detailed script. And there was a reference to his disease, and his disease is still alive uh, okay. in the mind. Except I had to see, uh, revisit his disease for exit. Oh, okay. So it was the accent that you needed to yes. revisit? Yes. Okay. Um, well, your character struggles a lot with um, the contrast of past and present, and tackles the concept of polygamy. Um, what do you feel is the message that the viewer should take from George Hahn and his circumstance? Well, the message is that it is important for any individual to be able to understand the other cultures or respect the other cultures, at least a basic, you know, in terms of tolerance. And, uh, and the understanding helps you to, to th th then there's no friction in, in the society if you are able to, you know, yeah. respect each other's culture. Right. Then the life will be simpler and nicer. And uh, the the George Khan becomes quite uh, uh, quite pleasant in this West is West because he accepts that he's been unfair to the family in Pakistan, though he's been sending money home, but emotionally he was far away from them and he goes through this sense of guilt and uh, introspection and sense of awkwardness and humiliation. He goes through a whole gamut of emotions. Right. And uh, the, the acceptance of, uh, you know, a different environment. Obviously, if you're living in England, it is not Pakistan, it is England. Right. And if you have come to another country, then you have to understand and you have to, a certain amount of give and take has to be there, mm -hmm. you know, because right. England did not invite George Khan. George Khan came by choice, right. you know, mm -hmm. and George Khan cannot expect Britain to become Pakistan mm -hmm. or vice versa, yeah. you know. Yeah. In a way for you it was kind of a culture change as well because um, you were playing a Muslim man. How, how was it? How did you feel playing someone of a different religion? I have lots of Muslim friends in India. You know, in, in, in India, so for pretty, example... pretty easy for you? Yeah. India has the largest uh, uh, Muslims in the world except Indonesia. Mm -hmm. You know, we have more Muslims in, in, in India than Pakistan, for example. And um, would you say that all men are as confused as George Khan when it comes to marriage? No, uh, no <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> that's not true. But uh, George Khan certainly is confused. He's yeah. made a mistake, but it's too late uh, for him to realize that. And he tried to compensate uh, for the mistake which he's done. He's not able to handle uh, yeah. such an extraordinary situation. All right, well, thank you so much for your answers. Um, Akeem Khan, um, this was your debut, so how did it feel? Were you nervous? Um, before I started filming, yes, but when I met, when I met all the cast and crew, Mr. the wonderful on Puri, Jimmy Mishri, the director was fantastic, the producer, everybody on set, it just made me feel so comfortable and it made me feel so homely. Uh, I just blended in, I just did my job and it was fantastic. Um, you being of Pakistani descent, did you feel that this film helped you get back in touch with the culture? 
Well, I, I go I, I go to Pakistan every two, three years. So oh, okay then. <laughs> so I'm in touch with my culture. I read five times a month. So. Okay. Um, did you feel that Asians, do you feel that Asians who are born and raised in the Western culture um, can relate to your character? Yes. Um, no. Um, yes or no. Depends how they were raised, how the parents were. Because where I'm from in Bradford, um, the priest still they're still in touch with their roots and their traditions, which is very good. Um, whereas some other places, maybe if they lived in more of an English area, um, they might not be as in touch with their roots. They might not be in mosques around and stuff like that. So yeah, it will relate to a lot of people. I mean, this this film will relate to nearly every single person in the world. Right. As the moral of the story is, you know, your roots, you know. Mm -hmm. um, your family, how you bond, you know, stuff like that, and it will relate to a lot of right. people. Um, like you said, you felt, uh, you, you feel a bit in touch with your culture compared to most. Um, but how, how do you, how did you feel getting in touch with this character in particular because of that? Because there's kind of a contrast. Yeah. Um, he he has an English mother and a Pakistani father, and he doesn't really care about his, you know, his roots of Pakistan. Mm -hmm. As far as he knows, he's English. Right. And that's his culture. But uh, he soon finds out that he has got the roots and he does gradually, reluctantly learn about his country and his roots and he does feel comfortable with it by the end, thanks to Pete Nassim, who he sees as a father figure who he'd never seen in uh, George Khan. But by the end of the film, the, he, he's, he's reconnected with his father. Did your mom watch the film? She has, she's seen a rough copy, but she hasn't seen it all yet. Okay, well, how does she feel about this? She is over the moon. Okay, well, congratulations on all your success. And uh, do you know if there's anything next coming from you? From me? Um, yeah, you'll be hearing about me soon. Okay. I'll just say that. <laughs> all right, well, thank you so much for this interview. No, it was really nice meeting you. It's really nice meeting you.
screenwriter is probably always a different experience seeing your writing come to life on screen. Mm. Um, do you feel that was this was lived up to your expectations? Very much so. And, uh, uh, in many ways, it was uh, uh, it was more interesting to write because there was a larger emotional canvas there. I think one of the big questions that came from East is East, which I was always being asked, was, um, "What about Mrs. Carl Number One? Why why didn't we see her?" Mm -hmm. And I think with West is West, it was it was one of the first questions I wanted to answer myself. I wanted to define out who this woman was and how she felt about being left for those five years by her husband, who, who then married again in, in, in England. Uh, as Muslim, why she accepted that. But I wanted to know what was behind that acceptance. So it was really important that when when George does arrive to initially see her acting as a subservient wife, but then actually thinking at one point, hang on a minute, I have to confront this man. And I think it's a conference and confrontation that maybe wouldn't happen in real life. Mm -hmm. And many women, women wouldn't do that. Um, but because in, in film and in stories we heighten things, it was great to be able to see that woman saying, look, this is what you did to me. Don't you understand what's happened since you've gone? Um, so that was that was one of the, uh, the big um, things for me when writing West is West to to discover who that Mrs. Carl number one was, and then there's another scene in the film where the two women come together, the, first, the two wives, uh, and it was fantastic to write that scene because it was a big emotional scene, uh, and everyone says it's one of the first, it's one of the scenes they take away from the film. And it was always going to be the hardest scene because you had two women, both married to the same man. There was no way that you couldn't have a scene with them together. Um, but, the, but one spoke Punjabi, the other one spoke English. And then after realising that we don't need a translator because the audience can see and hear by looking at subtitles. And just by looking and listening to these two women, women they know exactly who they're talking about. So in that sense, it was a much more enjoyable script to write. Um, because of, of the massive canvas that I had. Okay. Um, well, William Faulkner said, write what you know. Mm. Um, do you feel that you put a lot of yourself, your personal experiences, into the film script? Yeah, yeah. I think, I think, I mean, not only because they're kind of semi-autobiographical, but I think all good writers would, would use their uh, emotional library. So it might not, it, it might not ha have happened um, to the, um, the, the, they might not know the characters personally, but we, we imbue them with the emotions of, of what we go through. And I think that's really important for, uh, for the truth of the piece and for the truth of the character. Right. Um, you obviously felt it was really important to write a sequel to East East as in um, West is West. So what do you hope viewers take away after watching the film? Um, I hope they see another side of George. Again, with, with East is East, after we've gone through that film, he's moved on emotionally. He's learnt certain things about himself and about his sons. And I think um, with West is West, he, he again, he makes great strides to understanding his life and the life he chose. He realises that the life he, he, life he chose and the life he left behind are completely different. I think um, within within weeks of him, him, him being back in Pakistan, he realizes that this is not the Pakistan he left 35 years ago. It's not the woman that he left 35 years ago. And eventually he realizes that he can't expect that woman to behave the way he expects her to behave. Um, and I think I hope people will kind of um, enjoy that journey that George makes and the journey that Sajid makes. Uh, I hope they kind of take away from the film the kind of philosophy of the of the of the, of the super teacher who who tells Sajid to be himself, to accept who he is, um, to not feel as if he has to act in a certain way, um, to be uh, just to be true within himself. Does your family watch the film? Do they watch it? They haven't seen it yet. They'll be seeing it over the next uh, week. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for this interview and for your time. Thank you. My pleasure.